May ingat lang sa tanan. For our next topic, we'll be talking about the loads on structures. Uh, there are a lot of loads acting on a building or a structure. We have a dead loads, live loads, wind loads, earthquake loads, hydrostatic and soil pressures, thermal and other effects, or even snow loads, no? For para sa mga laing lugar, no? Dahang uh, mga load nga ito i-consider kung mag Anta, analyze ta usaka structure but before we go on with or the discussion before we go on with the discussion of these different types of loads is ato sang isgutan of ning structural systems for transmitting loads okay um atong diri atong analyzeon kung giyon sa pagpasapasa sa mga structural members ang mga loads niya nga kuan gikari or na experience so the objective of a structural engineer is to design a structure that will be able to withstand all the loads to which it is subjected while serving its intended purpose throughout its intended lifespan. So, tungod ana, in designing a structure, an engineer must, therefore, dapat i-consider niya ang tanang loads na gi-expect niya realistically, ha? nga mo act on the structure during its planned lifespan. So, the loads that act on common civil engineering structures can be grouped according to their nature and source into three classes. The first one is the dead loads. So, dead loads are basically you know, due to the weight of a structural system itself and any other material permanently attached to it. So, kanyang dead loads is makonsider ni na ito nga sa usa ka structure na agyon ni kanunay nga gi-experience niya. Muna yung itawag niya dead load. Na ano siya kanunay. Di, na, di ni siya makmawa o mabalik. Um, na ano siya kanunay gikari sa usa ka structure. Next is the live loads. So, money ang opposite sa dead loads. Dead loads, which are movable or moving loads due to the use of the structure. So, live loads, uh, pwede ni siya na na time nga mawa siya, na, na, na po time nga na asaya. Pero, misa nga na ang nature niya is kanang kuan dapat niya pa natin i-consider. No? So, ang live loads, magdipindi po siya kung sa na type of structure or type of occupancy. No, ato na nang mga kung ano, mga hibawaan dito sa NSCP. No? Kung sa nga live loads ang ato i-consider depending on the type of the building. Next one is similar to live loads which is the environmental loads. So, these loads are caused by environmental effect, effects such as wind and earthquakes or in other places snow so based on the kuanisya kanang sa environment ang pinakakomon din sa ato ah is kaning of course wala mo tayo snow din no kaning wind and earthquakes so, mo po ni dako nga Risa no, anong naka-update tau gani CP tungod ani wind og earthquake kay sa so wind sa panahon sa Yolanda is kanang kwa ana man to siya no manag ning lapas ato siya sa mga consider na to nga nga wind pressure or I mean wind velocity sa so una ang kinatasan na nato is I think 
200 an 200 kilometers per hour ng wind speed so, so pagka abot na sa Yolanda lapas pa siya mabot ng siguro to siya 300 plus so mag-usap po to sa dakong rason nga nag-update ta og national structural code okay kaning national structural code dili na ni siya based on laboratories no ang mga formulas and considerations niya this is based also on the experiences nga nahitabo sa usa ka lugar mo nang sige na siya og update also the earthquakes kay sa panahon atong Yolanda 2013 uh, October 15 adto is kanang napoy ano katong nahitabo diri sa Bohol then all throughout Visayas, uh, Central Visayas, may napoy mga dagkong damage, di ba? So, usap po to sa mga kung kanang reason nga nung naka-update o NCP 2015. Okay, before that is the 2010. Okay, so mo ito mga, mga three classes of loads na ito yung consider sa Osaka Structural System. In addition to estimating the magnitudes of the building loads or of the design loads, an engineer must also consider the possibility that some of these loads might act simultaneously on the structure. Kuan, dapat i-consider po in analyze sa Osaka engineer, mag-analyze siya o structure is pwede man nga kaning dead load o live load tungkol kay ang dead load kay kuan ka na naaman na siya kanunay no yeah. na po yung time nga nga mo act ng live load so pwede i, so i-analyze sa engineer nga kung so may behavior sa sa structural system kung mo act ng dungan ng dead load o live load or kung sa may mahitabo sa or behavior sa sa ka structure if magdungan ning tulo ning dead load live load o environmental loads so ano pwede nga dead load live load plus earthquake load pwede po nga dead load live load o wind load ang nagdungan so muna i-consider na sa analysis sa sa ka engineer so, unsa yung pinaka-practical nga mahitabo, no? So, dili po siguro na ito i-consider nga magdunga ng dead load, live load, earthquake, wind load. Kaya grabe na kaya na, ga, ga, lino, ga, ga, ga bagyo pa gyan. <laughs> Kung ano kaya, no? Pero ang pinaka, ang consider lang is ang pinaka-practical. So, the structure is ano, finally designed so that it will be able to withstand the most unfavorable combination of load that is likely to occur in its life, lifetime. So, the minimum design loads and load combinations for which the structures must be designed are usually specified in building codes. So, the national codes providing guidance on loads for buildings, bridges, and other structures are the following. First is the minimum design loads for buildings and other structures. So, morning, ang international standards is mostly naka-anchor, ano yun, no? ang ASCE 7 2005 edition. The AASH 2 LRFD bridge design specifications. Specifications for structural steel buildings in 2010, steel construction manual, and the National Structural Code of the Philippines. Volume 1 buildings and the volume 2 bridges. But we are just kind of, uh, concerned with the National Structural Code of the Philippines, volume 1 buildings so although the well, no, load requirements of most local building codes are generally based on those national codes uh, listed 
So, local codes may contain additional provisions warranted by such regional conditions as earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, heavy snow, and the like. So, ang local building codes are usually legal documents enacted to safeguard public welfare and safety. So, tungkol kayo naamantay kung ano ka ng local na building codes because depende sa lugar, mag-differ man nga itong ano, mga load considerations or design considerations. So, local building codes are kuan, usually legal documents enacted to safeguard the public welfare and safety. So, ang engineer dapat must become kuan, siya, thoroughly familiar with the building code for the area in which the structure is to be built. So, lainasad o paano ka-design kag building in America, pero structural code of the Philippines or building code of the Philippines ang imong gibasihan. So, um, by kanang si tawag ganing? Common sense is you will anchor to the local building code kung asa gidesign ang Osaka structure. The loads described in the codes are usually based on past experience and study and the minimum for which the various types of structures must be designed. However, the engineer must decide if the structure is to be subjected to any loads in addition to those considered by the code. And if so, must design the structure to resist additional loads and if so, must design the structure to resist the additional loads. So remember that the engineer is ultimately responsible for the safe design of the structure. So ang engineer, ang structural engineer is siya may ano? ultimately responsible for the safe design of this structure. So ang dili sa ato uh, is the liability of a structural engineer is kuna ano, 15 years 15 years sa from the completion uh, na pay liability ang sa structural ana uh, structural engineer but kuno kanang kung ikaw or kung ang sa ka engineer kanang concern gyud kay sa sa ka structure na yung gi-design no Hili lang kay 15 years na siya. Una ko na una to. Uh, to out its lifespan. Mag cargo na sa huna huna sa sa ka engineer no nga. If ever na ay no, ano na ay usa ka sengan ani kana panghitabo sa earthquake. Aw uh, ini sa panahon sa earthquake, ang um, sud na na sa huna huna sa sa ka engineer halaga kung mga ipang design, no? So, the architect and engineer must work hand-in-hand, hand, no? Uh, kuhaan yun na sa must work, kuhaan ka na together for the, kuhaan, safe design of the structure. So, mag ng uh, structural engineer o the architect nga gawas nga nindot tanawon ang usa ka structure it must be designed safe for the kuan occupants future occupants so ang atong isgutan diri sa atong lesson number 2 is kuan to describe the types of loads commonly encountered in the design of structures and to introduce the basic concepts of load estimation. So, before we discuss the specific types of loads, so we begin with a brief description of the typical structural systems used in common buildings for transmitting loads to the ground. So, from the top, so sa structural system, Atong analyzeon o giyonsan niya pagpasapasa, no? Na, ang tun nga moabot siya sa ground. Kay, ang ground mo mag mukari sa atong 
structure. So we, we will introduce the concepts of load pack and tributary area. So then you describe that no, um, the loads and then discuss the live loads for buildings and including the dynamic effect or the impact of live loads. Then this Describe po nato ang environmental loads, including wind loads, snow loads, and earthquake loads. Then, na po tayo brief discussion no, sa hydrostatic and soil pressures. And thermal effects and conclude with the discussion about the uh, combination of loads used for design purposes. Okay, muna to kung ano, kaning combination of loads is um, muna ni ang time nga i-consider na to nga simultaneously magdungan ang low um, dead load, live load of environmental loads. So in most common buildings and other civil engineering facilities, two or more of the basic structural types so such as in this picture no, are assembled together to form a structural system that can transmit the applied loads to the ground through the foundation so such structural systems are also referred to as framing systems or frameworks and the components of such assemblage are called structural members. So, kani tawag ni nato as a ano, framing system or frameworks. No? Kani nag-combine, combine na niya. So, in a, as a whole, muna yung tawag nato structural system. So, the structural system is composed of the structural members. So, structural members ani is the column, beams, girders, intermediate beams. So, a girders and beams are the same. Ah, uh, ano? Beams is yeah. Ang ang explanation ani is a girder is a beam. No, a girder is a beam, but it beam uh, is is not always a girder okay kaning a beam kani or kani is these beams are supported by a girder so mo tay tiban in inyo ha a girder is not all a uh, a girder is a beam but a beam is not always a girder. Tuod kayo makaingon ta o girder na siya kung that beam is supported end to end supported end to end by a column. Okay? Such as kani. So, girder na siya. Girder. Okay? Ang end diri sa end point sa point F is na ay support na column. Sa L na po support na column. So, dili speak as at bang niya, girder po siya. Ang kani siya, kani, do pareha na siya, glent, dili sa kaning beam sa taliwa. So, girder ni siya, na ma, tawag na to. Kani, uh, beam, intermediate beam, or secondary beam, kani siya. Then, the diagonal bracing, this is for the lateral loads, no? Ito na, nice good time. Uh, slab also is a one, structural member. Slab, beams, columns, and foundations. So an example of a load carrying system for a single story building is shown in this one, figure. The system consists of a reinforced concrete roof slab resting on four steel beams. So, nag-rest siya sa upat ka steel beam ang kaning kaning slab. Marag, roof slab ni siya. Which in turn 
are supported by two larger beams called girders. So, ang slab, supportaan aning patka beams. Then, these four beams are supported by the these two girders. So, the girders are often supported on four columns attached to the footings at the ground level. So, because all connections are assumed to be bolted, in case steel structure ang gi consider ane. So, these ends are considered to be bolted. So, at the ends, ang, ang reaction ane niya is ang support niya yung consider na to is hinge. So, they can only transmit forces but not moments. So, kay dili man na fixed. Kung bungkago ni na to, ang reaction na niya diri is only kana horizontal or vertical forces. There is no moments kay wala man na siya naka-fix. Wala naka-fix. Kung concrete pa ni, this, this is monolithically casted. So, Okay, kung tanga naka fix na siya nga nodes or connection. But this time steel man, so kung bolt steel bolted connection, so nakakuha na siya ang hinge, considered hinged. So vertical and horizontal forces ra ang ma resist niya. So tuon kay di man siya maka resist o moment, inig na i load na ay kuan tayo na ilateral load din eh. So, muna yung nagkinang lang siya o bracing. Kaning diagonal bracing. Because they can only transmit forces but not moments. Thus, diagonal braces are only are needed to resist the horizontal loads caused by wind and earthquakes. So, muna yung cross bracing. This is the Ano, ang purpose niya is not to transmit, uh, not to support the building through vertical loads, and in dead loads, live loads na to, but inaghapak sa wind load o, or earthquake load ana pakilid ang yung direction at x direction, so inig sway sa building, so di siya, wala siya kay movement tungod aning bracing niya. So in this figure, a cross bracing is shown only to two sides of the building for simplicity. So, such bracing or other means of, kind of transmitting horizontal forces such as shear walls should be provided on all four sides of the building to resist loads applied in any direction in the horizontal plane. So, please take note that the architectural features such as exterior brick wall, partitions, or non-load bearing walls, doors, and windows are not considered to be part of the load-resisting structural system. So, although ang mga weight nila are considered in the design calculations, so, the structural systems of most buildings are designed to withstand loads in both the vertical and horizontal directions. The vertical loads due mainly to the occupancy and the self-weight are commonly referred to as the gravity loads. Okay. So, kung natin live load niya, consider anong structure o and dead load po niya due to weight. So, pa-vertical ang direction na niya. So, we call that also as gravity loads. So, the horizontal loads induced mainly by wind and earthquakes are called the lateral loads. So, ang pa-down niya na, na direction we, uh, perpendicular to the ground ang direction niya. We, we call it gravita, uh, gravity loads. Ang pakilid po niya Okay, mo shake man itong building pa lateral, no? So, pag-transmit ng earthquake load, uh, there is a joints na to, or uh, wind loads, there is a framing na to, we call it the lateral loads. And the term load path is used to describe how a load acting on the 
building is transmitted through the various members of the structural systems to the ground. Ang load path, may load path is, ano, I've described this ya kung kiyon sa pag-transmit sa, ano, yung asa ning agi ang atong loads ni consider it could be lateral loads and the gravity loads yun sa niya pag transmit hangtod mo abot siya sa ground mo na gitawag na to kan kanang load path the vertical gravity load path for the single story building of this figure kani is depicted on this kuan kanang figure so from the gravity loads we pakita na to gyan sa pag transmit no gyan sa pagpasa sa mga loads so any vertical distributed area load uh, force per area ang uh, unit niya so, applied to the roof slab is transmitted to the beams EF, GH, IJ, and KL as a distributed line load or force per length. So, kani siya diri sa babaw, sa roof slab na to, nagkari ni siya ano, gravity loads na uh, dead load and live loads. So, pa vertical lang yung action. So, ato na siyang gi... Kuan. Tungkol kay gi-consider na to nga ang mga loads diri sa slab is gi-support diri sa KL, IJ, GH, and EF. So, ato nang gi-bahin-bahin ang load sa slab. Atong gi-transmit diri sa mga beams. So, ang na-transmit niya nga load is the uniformly distributed load. So, as the beams are supported by girders, E, K, and F, L. So, E, K, and F, L nga load. So, mano siya no? From the top, supportaan siya ni nga beams. Then, these beams are supported by these girders. Kaling doha ka girders. So, na-transmit. Kani siya kay uniformly distributed load man. So, at ends are pin. Consider na ito nga bolted man siya, di ba? As discussed earlier. Then, kung bolted siya, so hinge itong i-consider na nga nga support. So, it will only resist the vertical and horizontal loads I mean reaction so ang reaction dili sa kilid transmit na to dili sa girders dili na siya uniformly distributed load but point loads na siya ano diba kaning I o J kay kaning beam so naan na siya transmit na si point loads to the girders so in reverse direction so ang reaction sa ka in transmit sa girder paubos na po so the columns in turn transmit the load on the footings so ang girders diba it is supported by columns so kuan at at joint at end support Nama siya reaction, pasa na yun po na diri sa atong columns. At the same time, from the columns, at transmit na yun sa footings. Then the footing now transmits the vertical loads to the ground. Nga nang daghan man yung araw, tungon kayo kung ano man siya. Nag-represent na siya sa soil pressure. So note that the diagonal braces do not participate in transmitting the gravity loads okay horizontal or may support ka na niya such as in this figure 
Fano. So, this figure depicts the horizontal or lateral load path for the same single story building. So, any horizontal load such as due to wind or earthquake applied on the roof slab is transmitted by the slab as in plane lateral forces to the two vertical frames. So, kaning uh, vertical frames. Mo nining resist sa wind or earthquake loads. Then, pasa da yun diri sa ground. So, as shown in this figure, is vertical frame consists of a beam and two columns and two inclined braces connected together by hinge connection. Such frames, called the braced frames, essentially act as a plane trusses under the action of lateral loads, with the braces transmitting the load from the roof level to the footings. So in some buildings, urban buildings, especially designed shear walls, no? and elevator shafts or moment resisting frames are used instead of braced frames to transmit lateral loads. So in case, uh, instead of ang ubang buildings, instead of nasa mga yan, you know, mga diagonal bracings, uh, ang gibuhat is kaning na yan, eh, mga shear walls. Uh, kanang atong uh, elevator shaft or sa British nga, paano na is kanang lift shaft is one. Gi kuan na siya, ang uban gi gama na siya nga pure buhos bitaw. Uh, so gi consider ang uban nag consider nga kana siya nga nga ko uh, nga structural element uh, gi consider na nga as part of the structural system nga mo resist sa lateral loads kay sayang man puno pure buhos then dili ni mo magamit nga motabang sa frame sa usaka structure so regardless of the structural system used the basic concept of ano, load transmission remains the same so that is the applied load is carried continuously from member to member until it has been fully transmitted to the ground so those are the ano kanang load path na no? kung unsa na to pag transmit ang usaka load to the ground which is the main support you know to. now let's let's talk about the ano, floor systems and tributary area as in the case of the single story building discussed previously the floor and roof slabs of multi-story buildings and the deck slabs of bridges are often supported on rectangular grids of beams and girders called floor systems so during the well, no, design process an engineer needs to determine how much of the total distributed load applied over the area of the slab is carried by each member of the floor system so the portion of the slab area whose load is carried by a particular member is called the tributary area of the member so in this figure, it shows the top view of the framing plan. No? So it turn out as above. So this is the top of the ah uh, this is the column no. So I beam and column here, uh, column, column. Then these are the girders. Can you see? Kadi nakablue ang color. These are the girders. So this beam supports this kaninga beam kaning mga naka naka mm, medyo dark nga color. Uh, kani siya nga dili sa kilid kani po kani kani. Uh, pwede pa ni matawag na tong girders diba kay it is supported column to column but this time is consider na to nga appeal siya sa aking supportaan aning mga girders so as in common practice the column lines in the two directions are identified by 
letters and numbers. So, mo ni kita wag nato og grid lines represented by letters and numbers. So, this is important sa mga plano no kay pwede kay ano sa during construction na kintahay dako kayo ang building nga gigama minta oy nay problema didto sa kuan column bitaw nga gibuhos na to sa column 1A uh, didto so din ka Del, uh, para to make it easier no? tabang ni grid lines so the slab rests on the beams and transmits is its load through beams to girders and then to columns. So ang slab wala nang nato gipakita diri no is supported by these uh, structural members. The slab is supported by these beams then these beams are supported by the girder then the girder will transmit it to the column then column to the footing then the footing will now transmit it to the ground so during the design process an engineer needs to determine how much of the total distributed load applied over the area of the slab is carried by each member of the floor system so Ari, ato na pong isagutan, o giunsa niya pagbahin-bahin sa load, no? Giunsa pagbahin-bahin sa slab. How sa aning mga beams ang load sa slab. So, the slabs are used in buildings and bridges are usually designed as one-way slabs. So, there there are two types of ano, slabs, no? We have one-way slab and two-way slabs. Hanapo yung kwan, cantilever slab, pero kwan, if it is supported by, ano, the, ang palibot niya is supported by a beam, atong, naidoha pa classification na niya. We have the one-way slab and the two-way slab. So, ato lang isgutan o giyon sana pag differentiate ng onya, no? So, sa, the, ang slab sa one, used in buildings and bridges are usually designed as one-way slabs. So, such slabs are assumed to be supported on two sides and bend only in one direction. For floor systems with one-way slabs, the tributary area of each beam is considered to be rectangular. Of, a equal length, of length equal to that of the beam and the width extending to half the distance to the adjacent beam on each side. So, as shown in this figure. <laughs> now, one-way slab gani. Example, gani. Gani siya ka part na. Makonsider na to na one-way slab kung kung kaning a short, shorter side di ba niya nga ang consider na to is kaning slab nga part nga ipalibutan siya o beam so kung ang ratio kani sa longer side over the shorter side is greater or equal to 2 di ba niya Kaning side over kaning side is greater or equal to 2 makaingon tanga one way slab pero kung ang longer side over the shorter side is lesser or equal to 1 makaingon tanga two way slab na siya okay so sa so one way slab kung kung inag so kung inag try na to solve sa ratio sa longer span with respect to the shorter span kung makaingon ganito ang one way slab na siya which is common to high rise buildings is ang pagbahin sa ang 
pagbahin ano, niya is uh, it is uh, it is considered to be supported two sides only so ang support pag na is the longer span so example to this one kani is kanis tungod kay na consider na to ni is as a one way slab so ang longer span niya a longer side mo ay support then mo bend siya na Ito pa, tungod kay kanirang duha mga gasuport niya sa analysis na to. So, tungaon na to, that's so nang, tanang, tungaon na to, that's so nang, uh, with, not, with sa shorter span. So, gibahin na, na to, uh, kani, S1 man siya. So, S1 over 2, nga length, mo na gi carry diri sa aning uh, beam. So, ang pikas ng side is gikari na po diri. So, kaning, kaning nga beam is dili lang kaning nga part mo yung gikari niya kanian eh. Also, sa pikas side kay kani lahit naman po ni nga one-way slab, di ba? Lahit na po ni siya nga one-way slab. So, ang half ani niya is gikari po ani nga beam. So, na dubli ang, kaninga beam, dubli ang gikari niya, compare ani sa edge na beam. Kaya wala naman siya isumpay din eh. Sa edge naman ni siya. Kani siya kay interior man. So, dubli ang iyang gikari. Tungod kay pareha mamutsipod siya o with. So, kanipod din eh, is muna yung tributary area. Half ani, ani. Uh, dili na po siya double kay ang length kaning S2 kay is less than the distance of S1 man. Pero to one way slab gya siya. So half then pasa da yung diri ani nga beam. So, pero mas dako dako gya po siya gikari compare to the edge beam. So manay tributary area sa saka beam ha. Considering one way slab one way slab the next pod is kane ang tributary area sa of the exterior edge girder is kane but half ang atbang niya is half anaman so kane ang tributary area niya kane pun nga girder tributary area of this interior girder is kane na tributary area na. So, kaninga column, kaninga column, interior man siya column, so between column to column, half ano niya, mo na tributary area, ano niya nga side, uh, diripon nga side sa left side niya, column to column, half ano niya, so mo po na iya ha, then, na po diri, kolom to kolom half ano niya so mao ni ang tributary area niya mao na responsibility niya kani nga kolom kani interior pero nasya sa edge no unlike diri sa interior yun na yun siya sa soon mas takod ako ang area ang i-cover niya kay tunga tunga man siya tunga po siya ni nga kolom tunga na nga kolom so takod ako ang tributary area niya Uh, diri po sa corner mo ni eh, tributary area tunga then tunga po diri so the procedure of calculating loads on the members of floor systems with one way slab is ato nang gi paano pakita gani ha <laughs> now kung two way gani di ba ang makaingon tag two way slab kung Ano ba? Kanang less ang ratio niya sa longer span to shorter span is kuan less less than 2 or equal to 1. So for flush systems with a beam length to spacing ratio of less than 1.5 
the slabs are designed as two-way slabs supported on all four sides so unlike sa koan sa one-way slab is duha man ang support niya no duha ka side sa two-way slab is ang upat ka side na so mo bend siya sa two direction na siya <laughs> na such slab is assumed to bend in two perpendicular directions like a plate and transmits its load to all four supporting beams along its edges so maingani na purma so pag l kani kay equal ra man siya square ang ano slab sadto pa l over l is equal to 1 so that is less than 2 so tributary area niya is ani so ang ang technique ana niya para makuha ni mo tributary area is from the corner column mag draw ra ka 45 degrees then 45 degrees pod antun nga asa siya mo takod mo na na siya nga area ani nga beam so kani nga beam cd is ang dili na ni siya uniformly distributed load pero triangular na siya mayani na siya kay Dili naman siya, wala naman gi half half, wala maning kaning A, B, O, C, D, wala naman na siya gatunga. O, two way naman siya, supported on all sides, so kaning siyang upat ka beam, nagbahin bahin siya. So, gi nga na. So, uh, kaning siya nga part is naka square. So, what if dili square, no? Uh, between 1 to 2 ang ratio niya. So, may nga ni ang, paano yan, medyo dako ang L1 compared to L2. Pero, wa siya ka, ang ratio niya is wala rin nga po to 2. So, 2 is slab yan po. Pero, as I have said, draw na ka 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees. So, na-form na ang triangle with 45 degrees. So, kan ang L2, I mean, ang beam AC o AB, uh, I mean BD, parehan ni siya o kanang area nga na kuan, uh, nga gikari. So, mo ni ang iyang kuan, kanang diagram. Then, uh, triangular. So, ang L1 na po, ang beam AB and CD, is kani po nang yang load diagram niyan dili na siya triangular trapezoidal na siya kay ang ani nga ani nga region ani nga part is uniformly distributed pero pag abot diri sa where it started to ano uh, where diri gamit ang katong 45 degrees uh, pa ubos na po siya pa zero diri sa corner na yun. so pa triangular triangular ok so muna ang kalahian sa kung kung ang ratio ng L1 over L2 is 2 or greater than 2 uh, kaning L1 kaning beam A, B o C, D ra ang the carry ana then uh, uniformly distributed na siya rectangular ang ani diagram pero kani kay two way slab naman so mo ni ang low diagram niya mo na approach sa ato analysis okay so uh, for the next video we will answer this problem so the floor of a building shown in the figure below is subjected to a uniformly distributed load of 3.5 kPa over its surface area. So wala pa tayong consider load combination aniha. Ato lang suwaya ng atong kuan kana naibawaan sa discussion.
yun sa insaon na to pag kani nga floor system insaon na to pag transmit ta, sa load down to the fan putting okay so determine the loads acting on all the members of the floor system unsa nga load ang nag-act ani ani nga beam ani nga beam ani nga beam ani nga beam ani pod ani then down to the column then to footing you know about ta nga kani siya giloadan og 3.5 kPa so uh, for the next video atoning and siran